Now it's correct. So for those who just joined us via recording, we're uh, going over some slides that are partly reviewed from what we did last time. Uh, this is focusing on a block that starts the robot moving, and then you have other blocks that decide how long it's going to move, and then they you eventually use the stop moving block. Um, the uh, start moving block um, that we were featuring on the last slide lets you specify any angle except straight back. There is a trick that you can use that uh, that causes this block to go straight back, but it's a lot easier to use the alternate block uh, that shown at the bottom of the screen where the cursor is. If you want to go straight forward or straight back, use start use this block. If you want to uh, move with a curve, then use this block and use the stop moving in either case when when you you want the robot to stop. Um, Here's a, an example of, from Training Camp 1 that uh, is a bit confusing. These, this move forward and move back block could have just as easily been plugged in directly to the blocks up here. But this is demonstrating that you can have a series of blocks that get executed when the program starts, which is the same as when you uh, push the, the big button at, at the bottom of the brick. Um, and then these blocks won't actually uh, be executed until somebody pushes the button just to the left of the round button, uh, and then it'll do these three blocks. Uh, in addition to the pink blocks that are in the main menu, uh, there's at least three more that you get by navigating to the lower left of the screen, finding a little tiny version of this Thing that shows little blocks with a plus sign. This means you want more blocks. It then gives you a choice of about six different kinds of blocks. If you want more movement blocks, you click on that and it adds to the menu, but not with its pink friends. It, it adds it to the bottom of the menu. So you or the kids have to remember to scroll down if they want these additional blocks. Um, this one is a different way of controlling a turn. If, you, if the two numbers here are the same, it will go straight because you're telling it the, both wheels to go the same speed. But if you make the left uh, wheel go faster than the right wheel, it will turn to the right. To make the right wheel go faster than the left wheel, it will turn to the left. Um, it's not too often you need this, but it's available for special cases. Um, you can also use this block to tell it what to do when you tell it the main program tells it to stop. Um, Normally, when you tell it to stop, it tries to stop as quick as it can uh, by using uh, the what EV uh, vehicles use when you t press on the brake lightly. It doesn't actually apply the old-fashioned friction brakes. It uses uh, the motors uh, uh, with some re uh, electrical resistance to slow uh, the wheels to a stop. Um, if you say coast instead, then when you give it the stop command, it will continue forward based on uh, whatever momentum the robot has in that direction. Um, hold position is a kind of a magical one that could be handy in some cases. Um, if the robot has a lot of momentum and you uh, tell it, even if you told it to break, it might um, keep going a bit. Uh, if you tell it to hold position, it remembers where the wheels were when you said stop and it may back up if it needs to, it will back up to that position and hold that position um, because the motors actually have a built-in sensor. Another thing that can come up is when you ask it uh, to start moving, do you want it to accelerate very fast, very slow, or in medium? If you don't tell it otherwise, it will accelerate at a medium rate. But on a slippery surface, uh, uh, or if the wheels are getting slippery, uh, it may turn the wheels um, sort of like a uh, automobile that where you jam on the accelerator uh, may uh, so-called burn rubber, um, and that will make the uh, movement less precise because you won't be able to predict how much the wheels spin before it starts moving. So you might want slow acceleration to get more precise movement or fast acceleration to get there sooner because the robot's in a hurry to score points.
Any questions on these three blocks? Uh, last time we interactively talked about uh, the built-in gyro, uh, where we say even though when you drag this block out from the menu, it typically says pitch, uh, you almost always want yaw because you want to use the gyro to control turning left or right. And yaw is the technical term for measuring the angle of, of turn. Um, and this will be tend to be much more precise than uh, doing it by time or by inches uh, or by centimeters. This actually, the gyro measures the turn. Uh, I think we'll be demonstrating that again in a minute. Um, you typically use that yaw angle in a comparison block, and this one shows you're, you're uh, generating either true or false based on whether the yaw has uh, reached an angle greater than 89, which would typically become true at 90, uh, but if it's turning so fast that it reaches 91, it'll still become true, and then you can do something in a uh, conditional block, which we'll demonstrate on the screen. Um, one thing you can do is wait. Wait does not say the robot should wait. It says the program should wait uh, until something becomes true, in this case, until the yaw, yaw angle is greater than 89. Um, uh, the way I think of it, based on some computer science background, is wait is a shorthand for uh, do a loop and continue looping um, while the robot is moving until this condition becomes true. Uh, but linguistically, it's easier to say wait until it's true um, rather than loop until it's true. But we do have a separate control block for looping, which we'll touch on. Here's an example where we set the yaw angle to zero to, so that it's wherever the robot is pointing before it starts moving. Then we make a turn in place to the right uh, the robot starts that turn. The program uh, waits until the yaw angle detected by the built-in gyro is greater than 89. And then this next pink block gets executed, which stops the robot. Questions about that? So here, here's all of that uh, with a little bit more context, uh, where we set the movement to 20%. Uh, we use those same, uh, except in this case, we're, we're measuring pitch. I think I should change the slide. Pitch is legal in this language, but um, that would assume that we're somehow measuring the robot pitching up to climb a hill, which is not too common on a flat playing field. But uh, you may want to design a challenge for the kids to actually measure pitch. Um, here's where you're using the uh, yaw angle to make a left turn. This is more complicated because in uh, the scratch language, a uh, <clears throat> yaw angle rotating counterclockwise <coughs> makes it go from zero to negative. And so uh, a 90 degree turn would be less than 89, negative 89. The um, fourth graders are probably not going to know what you're talking about but maybe the eighth graders will, or maybe the fourth and fifth graders uh, will get an early start on learning negative numbers because they have a need to know in order to control the left turn. Questions about that? Uh, I think maybe I can show with my hand. Um, if I'm, uh, let's see, from your point of view, this would be clockwise. That would be a positive yaw angle. Uh, this would uh, be uh, counterclockwise, and that would be a negative yaw angle. I've seen cases where if the uh, set yaw angle to zero is immediately followed by start moving, uh, uh, for some reason it doesn't capture the yaw angle correctly and misbehaves. I think was that was a bug in one version of the software. But the workaround, if you run into that, is to put a very short delay uh, between setting the yaw angle to zero and starting the robot moving. And then if it misbehaves, it should behave after that. 
Um, it could probably even a tenth of a second would work as well. So I think we're going to, let's see if we got some other, yeah, these are more blocks. I'm going to switch to interactive mode unless you have questions about the slides so far. Okay, so let me just stop this share and go to sharing Spike Prime. So here's the program that we were working on last time. And uh, it's probably still in, in slot one of this robot. So I'm gonna talk about it and demonstrate it. And then I'm gonna make it a little fancier. Um, so here we tell it to go forward 11 centimeters. It's gonna start at the beginning of the road. Then it's going to reach the turn and it's going to turn in place this half a rotation by coincidence will be approximately a 90 degree turn. The rotations uh, refer to the, return, the turning of the wheel's axles and uh, having the, the left wheel uh, turn counterclockwise forward a half of the uh, axle rotation while the right wheel is turning a half a rotation counterclockwise, which drives the robot, uh, no, yeah, also counterclockwise. Uh, on the right side, we'll drive that wheel backwards. Uh, then it goes straight for 72 centimeters. It calculates that because you previously told it that one wheel rotation was 17 and a half centimeters, which is the circumference of the wheel, uh, at least the wheels we're using tonight. And then you tell it to whatever direction it's pointing now, consider it zero, start a gradual left turn uh, and keep turning while the program waits for the yaw angle to be less than 89, which would me mean that it's achieved a 90 degree left turn, after, although a gradual one. That won't follow the road very well. We did that as an experiment last time. So I'm going to change this to a turn in place uh, by rotating that. Then I'm going to tell it to stop moving momentarily and then tell it to move forward for 17 and a half centimeters and then make a right turn uh, for a half a rotation uh, of the wheel of the wheel axles, which will be a 90 degree right, right turn approximately. And then it's gonna try to lower its arm. Uh, let me go ahead and download that into the robot and see if it does approximately that. Oh, we lost our connection to the robot, so I have to reconnect it up here. Okay, now we're connected and I should be able to download the program. Okay, it's downloaded. Now, if I stop the share, it should make the map big on your screen. By the way, if you, uh, we had some trouble with the robot colliding with the, the house etc uh, because i was using an old map this is a newer map with a spacing that gives the robot uh room to move so ah, still got caught up well bring it over There we go, that's better. So it, it's going as straight as it can without uh, any light, detect, light detection, but it overshot. So we need to make that run down field shorter. Let me measure that. I think this map has different dimensions the last time. So we get a centimeters.
I'm going to go back to the program. And and change this to 64. So the 72 was about right for the mat we used last time, but different mat needs different dimensions. Put the cat back in the box. Well, almost got the cat correct. Any questions about what the program did, how it did it? Okay, so we'll push on a little bit. Um, first, I'm gonna in, improve the program um, by adding more gyro turns. So let's go back to screen share. So we have this uh, gyro turn, which is the second turn after it ran, ran down field for 64 centimeters. But we can use the gyro turn for each of these turns. I have to make it a little smaller to give myself room. Um, and I can make copies of these four blocks by separating them out, right clicking, and then clicking on duplicate. So now I've got one copy of that. And I'll duplicate it again. Oop. I'm missing one block. Okay. Now, why do I need three copies? Because I want this first turn to be gyro controlled. So I'm going to separate this, go straight, and toss away this approximate turn where it uses a half a rotation. And then I'm going to plug this in. And then put the, this one here. But this turn should not be to the left. It's the, the very first turn on the map. That should be a right turn. So I'm going to change this all the way around to here to right 100. And I need to change this to positive not, uh, 89. But it's a little more harder than that because the block we're using is less than. We want the yaw angle, we want the robot to keep going until the yaw angle is greater than 89. So this green block is the wrong one. So we have to reconstruct here. I'm going to take that green block out. I'm going to go to the operators here and find a greater than one that looks very similar, but is greater than. I'm going to put the uh, angle back in there and change this to 89. And it's going to go straight. And now it needs to make its left turn, which is one of the copies here. Um, and after it makes that left turn at, uh, off to the right there, it needs to go straight for 17 and a half centimeters to get to the house. Um, but instead of making a approximate right turn at, when it gets to the house, it's gonna use the yaw angle again. So I'm gonna to toss this one away and I'm gonna drag this down here. I got the same problem though, a right turn would be positive. So, so I'm gonna turn this over here and I'm gonna take this green one out and I could go reconstruct it, but I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna try grab this one, which I've already, oops, I'll grab the green part here. Grab that out, separate it out, right click on it, duplicate it. So I'm just, oops. 
right click right there, duplicate. Now I got a, another copy of that greater than 89. I can plug it in down here, toss these guys away, put this one back. Oop. So let me read my program. Um, start from the, uh, the starting point of the road, go forward 11 centimeters, set the eye angle to zero, start moving, uh, turning in place to the right. Um, keep doing that while the program waits for the eye angle to be greater than 89. Tell the robot to stop moving, then tell her to go straight for 64 centimeters. Uh, then tell it to set the yaw angle to that direction is now, which is pointing downfield, uh, to, and then start moving uh, with a hard left turn in place. Um, keep doing that until the yaw angle decreases to less than minus 89. Stop moving, then go forward 17 and a half centimeters, then set the yaw angle to zero again, uh, turn in place to the right. I'll have the program wait until the yaw angle is greater than 89, and then the program will tell the robot to stop. And then we want to plug this blue one back in to drop the grabber, see if we can grab the cat. Any questions about this rather long sequence? So let's go ahead and download that into the robot. Drop the share. Grab the robot. Pretty close to grabbing the cat. So we could uh, remeasure that distance. It needs to move forward a little bit farther. Uh, it probably needs to go a little bit less to the left. Um, so you can see with the refine this program, we can probably capture the cat. Once it's grabbed the cat, it can reverse that whole sequence and back up all the way back to the house. Uh, I don't know if we're going to uh, demonstrate that tonight, but I've been able to get this program to be precise enough to capture the cat. The problem, though, is that even though this program works pretty well, every time it runs downfield, it's going to start in a slightly different angle. And if it starts exactly straight and the wheels are, are turning accurately, it might get all the way down here and still be in the middle of the road. But if it starts just a couple of degrees off right here, by the time it gets here, it will be off. It'll make the turn and be off again, and the, uh, the amount it's off will compound, and it won't be able to get exactly to the cat. And in a competitive environment, you can explain this to the kids to say, oh, when we're just having fun, capturing the cat one out of 10 times is fine. But at a tournament, if the challenge is something else, not going to be the cat, and you only reach exactly where you want to go one out of 10 times, you're not going to reliably make points in the competition. So you want a more reliable method of navigating than uh, gyro turns and, and uh, going as straight as you can without knowing. Um, an analogy that sometimes works with the kids, um, depending on whether you think it's appropriate to blindfold one of the kids, um, you can have a kid practice walking in a straight line with his, his or her eyes open um, and then blindfolding him and asking him to repeat that. And the longer the distance they, they walk blindfolded, the more likely they're, they're no longer gonna be in a straight line. Uh, and that's the same for robots. The way humans compensate that for that, uh, assuming they're fully sighted is by adjusting uh, instinctively along the way to keep going in the straight line that they were instructed to go the way robots can do that is to use light sensors. And that's what we're gonna do next. Any questions about that? 
Okay, so I'm going to switch to a different share screen, which I call the whiteboard. I think I go here first, and then I'll switch tabs. Up to here, and then make that bigger. So here's some math. Uh, this could be over the heads of uh, the younger kids, but it, uh, if they learn this math, the robot will behave better. So this is a situation where instead of the kids saying, what's this math good for? Why do I have to know this? Uh, you can actually show them that a little bit of math makes for a more reliable robot. So now they have a reason to learn some math. Um, so on the math that we used last time, it was so glossy that if you measured the amount of light reflected over the black road, it was actually 50% was being reflected off the glossy black. And over the glossy white, it was 98 to 100%. So halfway between those numbers was about 75%. So you could write a program that says, um, if we're currently measuring 75%, go straight. Uh, if we're measuring um, more than 75%, um, then uh, we've gone off to the right and we need to start turning to the left. Um, if it's uh, moved to the left over the black, it's now going to uh, get it back about 50% and you can write a, the, tell the program to make an adjustment to the right to get back uh, to the sensor being approximately at the edge. So this is what we call an if then else situation. Uh, this gets into some uh, more math and we'll come back to this. Uh, I think this will make a little bit more sense, but I'm gonna do it in two steps. It turns out the amount I'm used tonight is flat black. And so these numbers are not right. It, black is not 75%, excuse me, it's not 50%. It's much less than that because of a flat black. And so here's an opportunity to demonstrate how we can use the robot to tell us the right numbers. Uh, so let me switch to that. Um, so if I hold this sensor here, which I will do in a minute, that will be a number that is gonna be less than 50. If I hold it over here, it's gonna be pretty close to 100 because the right sensor is over white, because right on the edge, there will be a number in between because not all the light is reflecting back from white, some of us uh, being absorbed by the matte black. Uh, so let me, now that I've showed you that uh, kind of on the big screen, I'm gonna do it again uh, with a screen share of the app to show what the app can do to help us on that. I'll get some more ch chats I didn't see there because I was talking. Uh, okay, so I'm ask a question and Tristan answered. Thank you. Feel, feel free to shout out because I, I, I won't always see your chats. Um, so up here towards the top, you see these tiny icons. They are trying to tell us what the two light sensors, the left light sensor is connected to A, the right light sensor is connected to B, and we have three motors that's giving us some information about the motors. Pretty hard to see, especially on the screen shares, but fortunately, if I click this, it will repaint it much bigger. So it's saying right now, <clears throat> the uh, light sensor connected to B is detecting white, but we don't wanna know the color. We wanna know the amount of reflection. So that same sensor is reporting that, but in order to get it on the screen, I have to change it right here. I change it to reflect. That doesn't change the program. It just changes what the app is telling us uh, is going on right now. Um, so it says right now it's measuring 99% reflected black. And if you look in the little uh, window where it shows the mat, I'm going to shift it to the left. The, so the sensor is over the middle of the road, and now we're measuring 18% reflected light rather than 50%, uh, which was 
what we would have got if we used last week's glossy map. So we to, to navigate uh, along the edge of the road, we want to think about a number between 18 and, and 100. So let me round that to 20 and say that's a range of 80. If I add half of that to 20, I get 60. Um, so 60 could be a middle number that we can use to navigate. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. Any questions about what this screen is, is telling us? It's right now it's, it's saying that the left sensor is detecting blue. Why is that? Because the left sensor is over the lake. If I shift it to the right, it'll say the left sensor is detecting white. Um, if I shift it over the black, it'll say black. The left sensor. Now, if I shift it over the red uh, rectangle, it'll give me the color. So this same one sensor can either be reporting back color or it can be reporting back percentage reflection. But I interrupted myself. What, any questions about what we're looking at right now? All right, so let's go back and use what we think we learned in order to improve the program. So I'm, I'm concerned with this 64 centimeter rundown field. So I'm going to unplug this. Um, don't need this guy anymore. I'm going to toss him away and that one away. And I'm going to replace this. Go straight as you can for 64 centimeters uh, with a loop. And I'm going to do it wrong at first, and you'll see what my error is. I'm going to go to Control, and I'm going to select Forever. And this loop will uh, go around and around forever, uh, which is not quite right, but it'll be uh, easy to demonstrate. And you'll see what the fly is uh, in a big way in a minute. And then I'm going to look for this block here that says If, Then, Else. I'm going to put it inside the loop. And then I'm going to think about that 60% uh, percent reflection number. And I'm going to say, I want the light sensor to tell me whether it's greater than or less than 60%. So I'm going to go find the light sensor in, the, in these blue blocks. And particularly, I'm interested in reflected light, the percentage reflected light. Actually, I can uh, save a step by using this one. So I'll use this one. I'll plug it in. Notice that this is a trapezoid and will fit right there because this generates a true-false value, and that's what if then wants right there. But this is wrong because the sensor we're talking about is connected to B, so we change this to B. And we said we're interested in uh, a threshold of 60. 60 would probably work, but uh, 50, 50 would probably work, but 60 is halfway between 20 and 100. Um, and if it's less than 60, that means it's darker than the middle dark, uh, uh, measurement. If it's getting dark, that means the sensor's over the road rather than over the white, and we need to turn right to get back to the edge. So I'm going to go to the movement box and I'm going to get a start moving and I'm going to turn right. And using this 30% turn, it might turn out to be about right. So I'm going to say that that's what I'm going to use. I can change this percent turn later if it's not behaving correctly. Now, if this is false, that means that it's not true that the reflection percentage is less than 60, so it must be 60 or more. If 60 or more, that means it's starting to get pretty bright. It's not over that dark 20% black. It's over something that's pretty clearly white, and it's neat, and it's varying off to the right, so we need to turn left. So we get the same block, put it in the else case, but change it to left by dragging this around to left 30. So now it's essentially saying, keep monitoring the, the light sensor connected to B. Whenever it's less than 60, 
uh, correct to the right whenever it's 60 or more, connect to the left. So this is basically saying wiggle down the road. Um, and later we're going to reconnect this because we wanted to make that left turn, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, we'll just leave it off uh, for reasons you'll see, and then we'll fix it, make it better in a second. Any questions about what we think we're trying to make, make this loop do? If you're if you've done been if you've done anything like this before, you're going to anticipate the flaw is it's going to keep doing this forever. I didn't tell it when to stop wiggling along the right edge of the road, um, and we wanted to make a left turn at some point. So uh, I'm going to need it to stop at some point. But right now, for a test, we're just going to tell it to go until I grab it, until the human intervenes. So I need to put this in the robot. And I need to drop the share. And tell it to go. It seems wiggling down the road. So while it's going slower than it did before a bit, uh, it's pretty precise, but now it's lost the, uh, the black edge and it's just going to wander around looking for that right value because I told it to do that forever. So I need to improve it further now. So would it be possible to do a loop like that so it just follows the road? And if so, why wouldn't we want to do that? Yes, um, I'm hoping we have time where I, I will actually demonstrate that. Um, but even if we did that, what, what it would do is it would follow the road to the left if we, we were clever enough to get it to follow the road, uh, which there is a way of doing that. It would then go uh, down farther it, until it got to the next left turn. And it, if it's still working well, it would make that turn. And then it would follow the road down past the little biplane by the airport and then keep going off the map because we still haven't told it when to stop doing it. Uh, it might, if it was super clever, it might somehow make a sharp left turn and follow the road back around to the beginning, but I doubt it would make that 180 successfully. Um, so while, while what you said is something that we do want to do, um, we still ha eventually have to grapple with when it's going to do the next thing, which is to drop the arm using the uh, blue motor block and, uh, and the motor connected to E, which is this last thing in this previous sequence. Does that answer your, part of your question? Yes. So, so another way of saying that is, Eventually, it's going to stop following the road and do the blue block. So eventually, we're going to have to have a way to tell it when to do that. Um, so I think that I, I will use your hint to, to go on to the next thing, um, because we can tackle that problem and the termination a little bit differently. Um, there's lots of ways to solve problems. That's our, and the nature of engineering and, and Lego robotics is there's no one uh, solution. So what I'm going to do is go back to my whiteboard and we're going to get into some more math. So this is math that I developed uh, a couple weeks ago when I was using a glossy mat, but we're using the flat black mat tonight. So I'm going to uh, pretend this is a real whiteboard uh, and I'm going to uh, drop out of uh, the big screen mode here. I think I can get it to do that if I hit escape enough times. There we go. 
go to that second slide. It's smaller on your end now, but hopefully it's still readable. Uh, I can make it maybe a little bigger. Yeah. And I'm going to update these numbers by what we uh, found empirically just a little while ago. 20% uh, uh, means it's over the black and we want it to turn right. Um, and we could use we use a 30% turn to do that. 60% um, was the middle ground. And we didn't actually have a case of that in our program, but it, we could have put in a more complicated if that else and said, if it's exactly 60% go straight. And uh, let's say 99% or, or more. Let's say greater than 98. We we'll aren't to turn left. And maybe that's a minus 30, similar to what we did. So we can do that with an if then else. If we wanted to cover this exactly 6% case, we need a little bit more code. But we can also do it mathematically. Uh, so we can update this to um, what's between um, 25 and 60. That's 20 and 60. And what's between, wh what do we do between 60 um, and 100? Uh, well, we can kind of construct a formula. We could say, if we were to take a value that is as little as 20, um, well, let's say if it's 60 and we subtract the reflection value, if the reflection value is 60, uh, that's going to give us a zero. 60 minus 60% 60 reflective zero, which would tell, uh, and if we uh, tell it to go as a zero percent turn, that might be right. Um, actually, be before I get to all these cases, I need to show you a trick that I forgot to show you earlier. So I'm gonna switch back to the program and show you something. If we take this block right here, it kind of makes sense for it to say right 30. Let me make that a little bigger for you. When I first saw that a left was not uh, was characterized as left and minus 30, that to me that sounded like redundant. It's really left 30. It's not left negative 30, but there's a reason why Lego did it that way. This is an oval. And while we normally fill it in by dragging this around, it's more flexible than that. We can actually type a number right here. So we could type 40. And then it figures out that's right. If we type minus 40, it says, oh, you mean left. Well, that's just a shortcut for what I did already, but the plot thickens. I can go to the operators And I can grab just arbitrarily something like plus, and I can drop it right there. And it'll accept that, but now that won't do anything. But I could say five plus 50, it'll add five and 50 and uh, uh, produce 55, and it'll do a right turn 55%. Or I could say uh, minus. 10 and add that to minus 20 and get minus 30 and it'll do a 30% left turn. That's pretty complicated. Why would we want to do it so complicated? Because we could take something like a multiply and put that in instead. No, actually, let's use a subtract. We'll put a subtract in. And we could type in, let's say 60. And on the right side, instead of putting a fixed number, which we could do in our head, we could put a sensor. And we could say, we want to know the reflected per percentage from the sensor connected to B. 
And every time it goes around the loop, it'll take 60 and subtract the current value of that sensor, which will, might be 20 because it's over the black, in which case this will produce a 40 um, and 40 uh, will cause it to turn right. Or if it's measuring 90, uh, which means it's over the white, 60 minus 90 is minus 30, which will produce a left turn. So I'm gonna go back to the whiteboard in a minute, but if we're gonna do it that way, we don't need the if then else anymore. Um, we can just put that here, toss the rest of this code because the formula itself will do it. But we need to go back and look at the whiteboard again to confirm that this is what we wanted to do. So, the, why I took you back here is to show you that start moving is more flexible than it looks. You can actually put a formula in there and it'll calculate the formula and the formula the value of the formula will be how much it turns left or right. So let's go back to the whiteboard. Now, if you're barely following this, if you get your kit and do this yourself and experiment, it will sink in. I do not recommend you take the kids to this level of sophistication in week one, two, or three. But if they start saying, why can't we get it to just follow that left turn like uh, I was asked a little while ago, the answer is it could if you have fancy enough math. Um, and that's a teachable moment. And the kids will be motivated to learn how to do it if they want their robot to be able to track a road. Don't know whether that'll be useful this season, but in past seasons, that's been really useful. Uh, so I need to go back to my formulas. So here's the formula I just showed you uh, in the program, uh, but we now need to think about some examples. If the light sensor is producing 60, uh, 60 minus 60 is zero. And a zero a rate turn uh, is straight. If the light sensor is uh, reading 75%, that's more than 60. Um, 60 minus 75 is minus 15. Uh, so it was over the white, not way over the white, otherwise it would have been 99%. Uh, uh, but it's quite enough so it's no longer 60 and it's going to detect that early now because it's continuously measuring the light reflection and it'll start turning back a lot sooner than if it's waiting uh, for a big correction. So there should be less wiggling. Um, if, it's, if it's reading 90, uh, 60 minus 90, it's way off now and it's, it's gonna want to make a sharper turn to get back in line. And this is not slight left, this is sharp left. And this one is gradual left. Um, and 100 will produce a minus 40, which is even sharper. And do we have room in our whiteboard for more examples? No. So let's add another example. If it reads 40%, uh, it's over the black, maybe not squarely over the black, and the formula will be 60 minus 40, and it'll give a positive number of plus 20, which is gradual to the right, and it'll get itself back over the edge uh, without a lot of wiggling. It'll, it'll just adjust. So this is the real formula will calculate values for anywhere in the range of zero to 100. And the amount of turn will be proportional to how far away from the edge it is. If it's right on the um, edge of the black and the white, it'll, get, it'll keep going straight. But if it's somewhat off, it'll make a gradual turn to, uh, to the correct direction. If it's way off, it'll make a more severe turn. Any questions about this rather esoteric theory of why a formula might work? Shall we see it in action? 
Well, let's go back and take a look at the uh, the program we started to build before and see if it's got the formula we just talked about. Yeah, that's the formula. It's still a forever uh, because we haven't grappled with when we wanted to do something else. But let's go ahead and download it. And then stop this share. See that okay? Now it's line following. We they haven't told it to stop line following. It's making little corrections, a uh, bigger correction got back on the edge. It's off a ways, but it's making a stronger corrections back on the edge. Uh, I'm holding down the edge of the map with a safe line. And now it's confused because we didn't tell it when to stop. But the answer to your question a little while ago uh, uh, is yes. You can have a program actually track that turn, but it requires, well, at least my solution requires a formula. Questions about that? Okay, so while we've got it uh, looking at the map, let me find my tape measure. Oh gosh, where did I put it? That's a, a carpenter's nightmare. They have one tape measure and they put it in the wrong place. I'm gonna have to guess if I don't find it in another few seconds. Okay, we're gonna guess. Um, so downfield before it was 65. Um, the left turn is probably gonna use another five centimeters. Um, and then in front of the uh, house, it might be another, or did we say it was another 25? So I'm gonna get 65 and five is 70, 25 is 95. So maybe 95 centimeters. That's my guesstimate because I can't find my tape measure. So I need to tell it how to do that. And this is going to be a little tricky, but bear with me. I'm going to go back to the program. So I need to replace this forever with a while or a, a repeat, excuse me. So I'm going to give it a repeat, but I don't want it to repeat for uh, 10 times, I'll repeat it until something specifically happens. So that's the repeat until. And I can put this in the loop because I wanted to do this until something occurs. What is that something? Well, I'm gonna use the axle rotations of the right wheel to measure distance. In a perfect world, Lego would have given me a fancy block to do that. But the block for, for using a wheel to measure distance is really primitive. So you're gonna to have to bear with some more math. Um, the block is under uh, the more motors. If I go down to the bottom, I don't see any more blue blocks. If I look under motors, the one I'm looking for is not listed. So that's a hint that I need to add some more blue blocks. Remember this icon I showed you in the slideshow that it was in the upper right of the slide, but on the screen, it's in the lower left, it's really tiny and I click on it. Now it gives me six choices and I could say I want more movement blocks. Those are the blocks we talked about on the slides. In this case, I want a motor block, um, a bunch of more motor blocks. So I click on that and then I X out of this and now if I scroll down to the bottom, I should find some more blue blocks. There they are. The one I'm interested in is this one here. This is the number relative, uh, uh, relative position. Very esoteric, so you're gonna have to bear with me for a minute. I'm gonna, I said the right wheel and the right wheel is connected to D. Move this up so you can see that on the screen. I want to use the right wheel to measure distance. 
the left, you could use the left wheel. Uh, and somebody asked me, why did I use the right wheel? But first I wanna show you the success with the right wheel. And then I'll tell you how you could have done it with the left wheel, but it's more complicated. Uh, so suspend your uh, judgment on that until we have time to talk about that even more esoteric situation. Now, what is relative position? Relative position is rotation of the axle relative to something else measured in de axle degrees turn. In other words, one turn would be 360 degrees. So I'm going to need to tell it that the relative position should start out, oh, not that one, as zero. And that would be after we made that first right turn. I wanna say now, uh, consider where you are now to be zero. Um, not where you started, but where you are now after that first right turn is zero. Then I wanted to go um, 90 centimeters. But now it's not going to do the math for me anymore. So I'm going to get, get my uh, calculator on my phone. And I'm going to say, I'm going to go 90 centimeters. And each turn of the axle is 17 and a half. What we said. Scroll down, make sure that's right. Do I remember that right? Yep. So 90 centimeters divided by 17 and a half um, is 5.14 uh, turns to the axle. But relative position is in degrees. So I need to multiply that by 360. So that's 1851. So I'm going to call that 1850. So I need a greater than comparison, similar to what we used for the gyro before. And I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to say the, the relative position needs to be greater than 1851. I hope I did the math right. So that says, instead of repeating forever, monitor that right wheel. Uh, in degrees, starting at zero. And when you've got 1,851 degrees, that might be about in front of the box where the cat is hiding. Um, and then instead of doing this, we want to stop. So we need the stop block here. Okay. What we actually want to do is make another turn and then uh, drop the, the cat grabber. But for, for this experiment, we'll just stop to see how close we got because I didn't use a tape measure. This is not gonna be right the first time. Questions about this code, what the code is supposed to be doing or would you prefer just to see if it actually does it? Nobody shy out, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay, I just downloaded that. I'm gonna stop to share. Should make that big on your screen. Okay, it's just line following, line following. It's, okay, it's having no trouble. Okay, so my estimate was way off. But it went into like it didn't keep going though, right? So I'm, I can get my tape measure and recalculate, but I'm going to uh, test your patience and do some trial and error. I'm going to say that's two wheel rotations. Um, so I'm going to subtract through, uh, up 700 from the pre... No, I'm going to subtract 600, which will make it uh, 1250. So I'm going to go back to share. And change this from 16, from 1851 uh, I'm gonna keep changing. Uh, I'm gonna make it an even fifteen hundred. See how close that gets. Again, I should be doing this more carefully with my tape measure and recalculating, but we'll see how close we can get.
No, overcompensated. So maybe 1700. I'm going to just change the program with you have to believe me because I'm not screen sharing. I just change it to 1700 and download it. Okay, pretty close. So let's boost it a little bit. I'm going to take it up to 1760. Too much. Seventeen ten. Not pretty close. Okay, we can clearly keep fussing with it, but I, I for I'm going to go to the next step, um, where I actually wanted to make the we don't need the left turn because it did that automatically for us from my following, so I just need that final right turn. So I'm going to take these blocks and plug them in at the bottom, and scroll up and say after it stops. I wanted to set the yaw angle to zero, turn right, and keep turning until it gets to greater than 89, then stop moving, then drop the uh, the blue arm to try to grab the cat. Being close, the main, main error is it didn't move forward enough. So let's have it go forward after it makes the right turn before it drops the arm. So we need a go forward block. So we grab this pink block, put it here. By the way, um, we could experiment. I'm pretty sure that any time we follow a stop by another block, we can leave out the stop. This is probably redundant because we give it something else to do. You always want to stop at the very end uh, if you didn't get you do it this way, but the, this extra stop in, uh, in a couple places could probably be removed and the program would do the same thing. I do not want it to go forward for 10 rotations. That's 10 rotations of the wheels. I want it to go forward for a few centimeters, like maybe five or no, four. I'll, I'll guess it's four again because I can't. I'll find the tape measure as soon as class is over. Go forward four centimeters, then drop the arm. Oh, sorry, I didn't stop to share.
Okay, so it seemed more tuning, but you can see where we're going with this. So let me do one other thing, and then uh, we'll take a breath here and talk some more. Um, I want to see if I can go faster. Um, if we go back to the program and look at the very beginning of it, it it's movement speed is 25%. Now this line following, will this line follower work at a faster speed? Let's try boosting it to 50%. Um, once the program, if we got the program more reliable than it is right now, if it's get, doing it every time, the next thing the kids are going to want to think about is, can I get these points faster so I can go on to the next mission and get even more points? So at first, accuracy is a priority, but once you get accuracy, you can consider going faster. So I need to stop my share again. Okay, so we need some tuning though. Um, what might we do to uh, get that under control? Definitely went faster, but it was a little on the wild side. So I'm gonna go back to share and do one other little variation. Here where we have the, the uh, 60 minus the reflected light. Uh, when it was going that fast, it, it tended to go off um, and make make big wiggles. So let's consider multiplying this by a constant. So we go get a multiply and put that here, put that this on the, the left side. So it calculates this difference. Oops. I did it again. Sometimes placing blocks on blocks is tricky. Try it over here. There we go. And I'm going to try multiplying this by 1.3 to see if it makes it less wild or wilder. So the difference is a certain speed, but I'm going to magnify the speed by, excuse me, a certain rate of change of turn based on the subtraction. And I'm going to magnify that calculation by 30% by multiplying by 1.3. Okay, that might have been better, but you can see, kind of see my point. We could make, we could try a 1.2 or we could try 0.9 in order to try to smooth this out. Um, so adjusting the formula to try to get uh, back to a, a small wiggle, but fast motion. At 25%, the wiggle was pretty nice, uh, not too much, but the robot moved kind of slow. Uh, Anybody want to suggest an experiment that we could do uh, now that we've gotten this far? A goal, anybody have a goal that you would like to challenge me with to see if I can figure it out on the fly? What about navigating using the red dotted lines versus the solid black road? Ah, okay, that's a fair challenge. And see if I can do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is we've been talking about measuring the uh, the distance 
by rotations of the right wheel. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I promised you, and then I'm going to address your question about the red dots and see what we can do in another 10 or 15 minutes. If I hold this up, this is the right wheel. When it's driving the robot forward, this turns clockwise. And this, if we told the relative position to be zero, now it's 45, excuse me, 90, 180, uh, 270, 360, now it's 400 and some, et cetera. But think about this wheel. If this wheel is driving the robot forward, um, it's gonna turn this way to drive the left side of the robot forward. So this is going to be minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, minus 360. We can still use that, but now we're gonna to have to have a, a, a more complicated test to measure an increasingly negative number until it gets so negative that we wanna stop. So that's why I chose the right wheel. It makes the math a little simpler, but either wheel could work. That, that was my question, not your question. So let's talk about your question. Um, what I actually want, want, uh, want to do is a little different than what you might have been thinking. I want to use the left sensor to follow the left edge of the road and the right sensor to count red blocks. Instead of using that complicated how many degrees of a right wheel, I'm going to count these blocks, and when it gets uh, to the last one, I'm going to have it make the left turn. Uh, so the question is, how do you, how can you line follow with one sensor and count blocks with the other sensor? So that's a bit of a mind bender, and I might be able to figure it out because I did this a year or two ago for a, a YouTube video, but I might goof up a lot. But maybe think, see me struggle. Um, and maybe that's still useful. So I've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. I think it's 21 red ones, but if it's not, we'll find out in a minute. So I'm going to get rid of this condition. We're not going to do it based on degrees and relative position. We don't need this set the relative position to zero anymore. I'm going to use the left sensor that's connected to A for line following, but I need a, a bit of a different formula. Uh, this time, if it's over white, it needs to turn right. And if it's over uh, black, it needs to turn left. So I'm going to guess, based on maybe prior experience, that I just put the 60 here. And I put the sensor value on the left. Oops. Try that again. <laughs> no. Try again. There we go. Poor guy. There we go. I've got this guy. So the, the light sensor, the reflection of the light sensor connected to a minus 60 times 1.3. And to give myself a little slack, I'm going to slow the robot down for a while until we maybe see if we get any success at all. So this might follow the, uh, the road. And so I'm gonna uh, stick in a counter. I wonder if I could maybe cheat for a second and um, put it the forever back just to test to see if it's line following. I'm going to see if it line follows the left side with this formula before I measure the distance. Okay. 
Yep. It's not doing a great job, but it is a line following using the left sensor and the right sensor is over the red. So, so far, so good. Not elegant, but effective. So now I need to think about code for counting. So I'm going to get rid of the forever now because I wanted to do it while it's counting. Now I'm going to do it the wrong way first um, to kind of just show how the problem solving could be kind of incremental. I'm going to use an equal. No, wait a minute. I think there's one under the light sensor I want. I think it's this one I want. Okay, so this is the right ballpark, especially if I change this to B, but this isn't right. I'm saying repeat until it detects red. And I think what that will do is it will go until it finds the first red block. Uh, but we wanted to uh, find the 21st red block, which is gonna be a lot more complicated. But let's, let's test this to see if it stops after the first red block. Yep. So what it did is that final mo motion after it found the red block, um, which I could have just told it to stop, but I, I didn't. So it, it made it more complicated and dropped the hook there. So now I have to think, how do I count? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Do something advanced that's in a, a later slide that we haven't got to. Uh, where I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to say make a variable. And I'm going to say red count. And it's put that in my palette over here. And I'm going to set red count to zero in the program. And then I'm going to put this, put an infinite else in here. This still won't be right, um, but it'll get a little closer. If I detect red, then I want to count it as one more red. So I'm going to say operators. And first I need the variables. Change red count by one. So if it detects red, I want to uh, change red count by one, which is the same as add one to what it already is. Um, and 
then if it goes just a little bit farther, it's going to see red again. So what I wanted to do is uh, do an in internal repeat. So I'm going to add another repeat. It's going to get complicated. And probably after I thought about it, I could think of a simpler solution. But I'm going to repeat after adding one, because I found red, I'm going to keep moving forward by duplicating this block, putting it in here. But now I'm, I want to keep going until it's not red anymore. So I'm going to say, Sensor repeat until the sensor is white because there's white between each red. So, and we want to, we're still talking about B, the B side. So, repeat the start moving until we find white. And then, once uh, we've found white, then it will drop through here. And it needs to loop back. So this if it's found red, it needs to cross. Let's see, let's put that off the side. But now we need to decide how many reds before we stop. So we say operator. Um, we'll say equal and go get our variable again, the value of the variable right there until red count is equal to 21. So set red count to zero, repeat this outer block until red count gets to 21. Um, if we see red, um, then increment it, the count of red, uh, but to avoid see, uh, getting the red immediately again, we're going to uh, follow the line until it gets to white. Um, and if it hasn't uh, done red, found red yet, it's in the white and it needs to keep moving until it finds red. So this is this does go back here. So if we haven't found red yet then uh, follow the line uh, using the left sensor. If we have found red, count that, and then uh, keep going until we find white. This, this may not be quite right, but it's in the ballpark. So I'm going to download it and see what it does. Okay, stop sharing. Did it, okay. So when it found that, it immediately right made the right turn. So the count I think was right or or close. So even though we're gonna only have one minute left, I'm gonna make one more change and then let you all go back to your evening. So I scroll up here after it's found the 21st red, we need to make a left turn. So I'm just going to scramble to put that back in. That's some old code we had before. Um, and I'm not going to use the gyro turn because I'm in a hurry. Um, I'm going to make a hard left turn, not in the loop, outside the loop. Um, or a half, a half rotation. 
And then I'm going to go straight. Uh, forget, was it 25 centimeters? Anybody remember how far we went after the first turn? Uh, we'll just pick a number, 20. And then as for it's gone down 20, um, it makes needs to make a right turn and we've got the code to make the right turn. So we'll use that and then it'll drop the hook. It won't be exactly right, but it, uh, it might do something interesting before we call, call it a night. Tell, 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 tell. Mind following. Oh, let's get one and wait while counter 21. Okay, it turned too soon, but it did, did do so after 21. So we would need it to run downfield a certain number of centimeters before it turned left. Any questions about what, how we did it, what it did, and why it's still not quite right? All right, thanks for your uh, diligence to stick it out for an hour and a half. Um, I'm gonna let you go, but if somebody's here after a, uh, a minute, that means that person wants to ask me a question after I stop recording, which I'll do now.